Guys, we had major, major news that dropped yesterday. Multiple huge stories, including the playoff expanding to 12 teams. That very likely will be coming out today. But one of the other things that happened in regards to realignment, it says, as a consequence of the Big 12 Conference starting negotiations early, sources tell CBS Sports there is now active discussions regarding Texas and Oklahoma leaving early for the SEC. So this is implying, and, and guys, let me just first say, this is going to happen. Because when you look at the timeline and you look at USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten in 2024, do we really think that Texas, Oklahoma, and the SEC are going to wait an extra year to get them into the conference? I think this is a situation where there's going to be some common ground that gets met between the ESPN, the SEC, and the Big 12 where you get some type of deal that allows Texas and Oklahoma to leave for the SEC. And in my opinion, they will be joining the SEC in 2024 with very little or no exit fee. And then you say, why would the Big 12 allow that? Well, the theory is ESP, the ESPN could then have maybe an influence and give the Big 12 possibly a better TV deal in exchange for Texas and Oklahoma leaving to the SEC one year early with minimal or zero exit fee. They don't want to have to pay any exit fee. And I believe I have the exact numbers in an article. You can see it says, report Texas, Oklahoma in active discussions to leave the Big 12 early. And then it says the two powerhouses are slated to join the SEC in 2025. Basically what I think is going to happen is they're just going to bump that up a year. So you will have the Big Ten and the SEC both on track to be 16-team conferences starting in 2024. It also says Texas and Oklahoma maintained they will stay in the Big 12 until 2025 in large part because of the financial penalties the schools will face. Each school would pay an exit fee of $80 million if they left early. And then it goes on to say that, you know, the Big 12, they're going to want something. If they're going to, right now, the Big 12 does have some leverage. It's very clear the SEC wants Texas and Oklahoma early. It's very clear Texas and Oklahoma want to be able to join the SEC to make that extra pay a year early. And of course, with the big stuff coming, uh, you know, out yesterday, that the Big 12 is starting their. Uh, you know, to open negotiations for their next TV contract. The theory around that is they want direct numbers to be able to bring teams in the Pac-12 and say, listen, this is how much we'll, we're worth. This is why you should come join our conference because you will, will be making more money if you join the Big 12 than if you stay in the Pac-12. So there's a lot of stuff at play, but my guess is, Texas and Oklahoma will join the SEC in 2024 and ESPN possibly will give the Big 12 a better TV deal, which in theory would also help ease the question of will Colorado, Arizona State, Arizona, and Utah want to join the Big 12? If they get an even better TV deal, it will become more clear. So this could be a, a situation where it affects three or four things and the final result of it helps the Big 12 get to 16 members. Uh, that could be the final result of Texas and Oklahoma leaving and joining the SEC in 2024, which if you look at the timeline, makes the most sense considering USC and UCLA are joining the Big Ten. Not saying that it has to happen, but if we want to be fair and balanced and we want both conferences to be at 16 members in 2024, it is kind of weird that Texas and Oklahoma announced that announcement was a year before the USC and UCLA announcement, yet USC and UCLA would join the Big Ten before Texas and Oklahoma joined the SEC. If you're just reading the tea leaves, it all adds up. 
that they will go a year early. Right now it's 2025. I think Texas and Oklahoma will be in the SEC in 2024. And the Big 12, right now they're saying we want an exit fee because they do have leverage. Those teams have to stay in that conference unless they work out some deal with ESPN or with someone to where they say, okay, if you give us a better deal, which would, in theory, make us a more attractive destination for Pac-12 teams, we could do something like that. So they're going to want something in return, and I think that's kind of how it's going to work out. Uh, I don't expect there would be there would it would make no financial sp- sense for Oklahoma and Texas to pay eighty million dollars just to join the Big Ten one year early. That wouldn't make any sense. So um, that is what I think that is happening in terms of that. And then we've got this: Could the Big Ten TV uh, news spark the next round of conference realignment? This is an SI writer. He says, quote, but that is likely to change if the Big 12 can get preliminary numbers and if those numbers are significantly higher than what the Pac-12 is likely to bring in, then that information might be the final push needed to kickstart the next round of realignment. But we'll have to wait and see if the Big 12 can extract significantly more value in this next deal. And then it says that the Big Ten media deal ate up the majority of cash available, which I don't really agree with. It actually freed up money theoretically for ESPN because ESPN, I'm sure, set aside a chunk of money that they were going to use on the Big Ten. Of course, that money is now free and that lends the idea that the Big Ten will be taking the Big 12's Tier 1 media rights and that also allows us to think maybe if the if ESPN really, or excuse me, Big 12, taking the Big 12 media rights, that also gives us the theory, you know, if this all happens, does ESPN give the Big 12 a better TV deal because they want Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC a year early? In turn, that will help Corks this whole situation and really get the ball rolling on conference expansion. What the Big 12 wants to happen is they want really good uh, TV numbers. That's why they're opening negotiations right now. They allow Texas and Oklahoma to go to the SEC. In exchange, they get a better TV deal. And then they go and they tell those teams in the Pac-12, you're making $25 million per year on your new Pac-12 deal or whatever it is. I'm just guessing. Um, you know, here you could be making $45 million, And that would help move that situation along. And then it says, a possible good news for Oregon State and Washington State fans saying the Big 12 could offer Oregon State and Washington State a lifeline But the caveat on that would be the Big 12, would they add for the sake of adding or would they save room for possible ACC teams? I just don't see the upside for the Big 12 to add Oregon State and Washington State. I think it's been pretty well documented. If this all goes like we think it's going to go, either the Pac-12 becomes basically a group of five conference keeps Oregon State and Washington State as its two remaining members while everyone else leaves, or the Pac-12 completely dissolves Oregon State and Washington State are off to the Mountain West. I would be shocked if the Big 12, because then you're just diluting it. Oregon State and Washington State simply don't bring enough money. They're not attractive for a TV deal, anything like that. You are just diluting the conference at that point. And I do think the Big 12, it says maybe they would wait for ACC teams. I don't know if they would have a good enough TV deal to attract ACC teams. That's the big issue there. Even if they get to a 16-team conference, even if ESPN gives them a sweetheart deal, you still have the ACC network that ESPN's obsessed with to get over. And then you also have the grant of rights deal through 2036. So there's a lot of stuff going on. But it does seem like the most realistic scenario, and all I can do is give you guys the most realistic scenario right now. Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC in 2024, which fits the timeline of USC and UCLA and UCLA going to the Big Ten. It's a clean break. You completely reset college football. And 
It would also, uh, you know, maybe the Big 12 gets a better TV deal out of this because obviously if Texas and Oklahoma don't pay the exit fee, which they're not going to, from a business sense to leave one year early paying $80 million, that's the reported money. That makes no sense. The worst case scenario, Texas and Oklahoma can just say, we're just going to stay in the Big 12 one extra year. We're not paying $80 million to get out of the conference a year early. If it was a decade early, then we would do it. A year, it's it, there's no it does not make smart business sense to do that. So they will wait if worst case scenario, but I do think this is something where the Big 12 understands, "Hey, they're not going to pay their exit fee to us. Okay, let's get something else." And they have some leverage they can say, "We will let Texas and Oklahoma leave early. We want something in return. We want a better TV deal. We want influence. You can have our tier one rights, but let's work something out and do a little exchange. We will give you Texas and Oklahoma in 2024. We want a better TV deal that will help convince those four schools in the Pac-12 to join our conference because we're going to be wanting more because now our TV deal is so much better than the Pac-12's TV deal. That is the whole theory behind that in my eyes. And guys, there's a a, a lot of stuff, a lot of rumors going around. There's stuff with Washington. I'm going to get that meeting with the Big Ten along with, of course, the major bombshell that we're expecting, I believe, tomorrow. So it is Thursday. I, I believe the meeting is tomorrow but I will discuss the whole playoff situation and, and we're expecting the, the major win for everyone involved with college football. The ab- absolute bombshell. We will be expanding to a 12-team playoff. I cannot wait to talk about that. It is an unbelievable situation. A win-win for everyone involved and it's really going to grow the sport. The sport has been dying. People are leaving left and right. They hate the NIL. They hate the realignment. But guys, this will save college football and it you know college football has no popularity it's going to get more popular again trust me there's going to be more important games at the end of the year that's what we need uh, but I'll talk about that in a whole nother video I just want to get on the record right now Texas and Oklahoma will be in the SEC in 2024 the Big 12 will get better numbers the deal will be exactly what I've said and it will help convince the other four schools and after that See, that's the trigger. After those four schools get convinced, then we get the four other schools going to the Big Ten, and my West Wing theory becomes true in the Big Ten. We know the Big Ten is trying to get a West Wing. Kevin Warren's come out and said, look, we're expanding. We want a West Wing, and that is what's happening there. So, guys, this is all breaking stuff. I'll continue to update everyone. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.